Oh my god. Come on, little sweetheart. Oh, look at you. Oh my gosh, guys. How amazing is that, huh? Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to the vlog for another beautiful day here in South Africa. We're gonna catch some breakfast before heading over to the reptile show. Food here in Africa is actually pretty good. You know, when you travel to different places, sometimes it's hard to eat because, uh, you know, it's a little bit bizarre, but the food here is actually pretty decent. Heading back over to the reptile show. Later on tonight, we head to Durban, and that's when the real African adventure begins. We're gonna get to see all kinds of crazy stuff on this adventure, but for now, over to the reptile show. Yeah. Hi, how are you guys? Hi, how's everything? Hey, what's going on, guys? How are you? Hi, oh my Michael. God. How are you? Hi. It's good to oh meet you. Oh my God. What's your name? <laughs> my name is Justin. Oh my God. It's so good to oh meet God. you. All right, guys, so it's pretty cool. I actually get to uh, present an award for the best exhibitor at the show, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, and it happens to be a friend of mine that I'm going to visit in Durban. His name is John. He has an amazing collection and a really cool thing. Remember the green tree python tree? Well, that's the guy that we're going to give it to. And by the way, I call him Thor because he reminds me of Thor. But regardless, this is going to be really cool to go present it to him. I decided to stand the best chef. All right. Congrats. Thank you so much. It's what do you think? You've got the award for the best exhibitor in the show. What do you think? You're a legend. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the legend. I think it was the green tree tree that did it for you. Oh, okay, no, fair enough. <laughs> it's well, awesome. Well, Congratulations, dude. Thanks. Yeah, it's awesome. All right, so I'm going to run around the show a little bit really quick. And actually, one of my friend's daughters is going to come around. I'm going to let her choose some snakes that we're going to feature really quickly. So uh, what do you want to pick first? I'm going to table tiger. You want really this one? looks like a tiger. Okay, let's take a look at that one. What we actually have here is a fire bumblebee, essentially. So it's a fire, it's a pastel, and it's a spider. And that combination is really beautiful. I mean, the fire gene just really brightens it up. The pastel obviously makes the bumblebee, and then the spider reduces the pattern. So she has a pretty good taste for really cool animals. I love them, you know, that's a really cool snake. It is light. I'm over it. It's so cute. The second snake that she picked was this one right here, which is absolutely gorgeous. This is a super pastel sugar ball python. And of course, the sugar and calicos are really similar where they kind of blow out the side patterns and kind of turn like a white. This one happens to also be het for azanthic, which of course is a recessive mutation yeah. that makes them really silver. So uh, you like this one too? Yeah, I do very much. So I tell you what, I am blown away by this. This is super cool. Uh, this guy here is 13 years old, right? It literally is a professional snake handler in the sense that you remove venomous snakes yes. from properties and stuff like that. So what type of snakes do you remove? I catch brimstone, wrinkles, puffers, night eaters, cape cobras. Uh, the 19th March, I did a course and put my first black mamba, so I handle those snakes. Yeah. Can you believe that? I love this kid. It's awesome. 13 years old, and he's catching mambas and adders, and I mean, this is absolutely incredible. So I tell you, what, guys like this inspire me so much because this is the future right here. So, uh, do you have somewhere that people can follow you? Yes, you can go follow me on Facebook on Ro Hops Wiser Serpents. It's where I post all my every time I catch a snake, I post it on the Facebook page. Yeah. And I I just actually reached uh, 2,100 people on my Facebook page the other day. Well, let's get him a lot more than 2,100. That would be great, everybody. Thank you. I will put a link in the description. Go give this guy a follow. This is actually a cinnamon caramel albino. The caramel gene is something that you're not seeing as much of lately, and the cinnamon is awesome. So when you put those two together, I mean, just look how cool that animal is. Again, it's cool to see it, and I wish that we see more caramels in the States, but you're starting not to see as many of them. Of course, they have some kinking issues, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people aren't working with them, but this animal here is absolutely flawless. So now we're on to something cool, a corn snake, but not just a normal corn snake. I didn't expect to come to Africa and see a corn snake mutation that I've never seen before, but sure enough, this is what they're calling a gungsten, and uh, look at this animal right here. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. This is really an amazing snake, and these are the babies right here. I mean, take a look at that. Again, that's a mutation that I really haven't seen. I wish I had some of these back home. This is 
another snake that I wasn't expecting to see. Of course, this is an albino northern pine snake. And look at that little guy hissing away. That's the thing about Pituophis. They love to like use that little mouth and hiss away, but they're really just bluffers to be honest with you. And they usually use that hiss as a kind of just a, a bluff technique to get their predators and stuff like that away from them. But nevertheless, this is pretty cool. Now, northern pine snakes get pretty big. They can literally get, you know, seven or eight foot long and pretty healthy body. So uh, again, a cool snake to find here in South Africa. Back to ball pythons. I'm at JDM Reptiles and this one is absolutely gorgeous here. This is actually a pastel orange dream champagne ball python. But just look at what it does to that color. I mean, obviously the orange dream is what's really dictating that kind of unbelievable pattern on it. And the color is absolutely beautiful. Take a look at these guys. Of course, these are three little baby <laughs> these are three little Lichianus, which are, of course, the largest gecko species in the planet, but these are just little ones. But look at how it's amazing on this log that you can really see their camouflage. But, I mean, look at how incredible these animals are. And it's amazing that here, in just a couple years, these things are going to be literally uh, one and a half or two pounds. I mean, they are really big lizards, but typically these guys are extremely docile and super great pets. Uh, this is definitely an animal that I'm going to definitely be putting in the zoo next door. And I really wasn't expecting to see a lot of lychees here. Uh, it's cool to see them because they're absolutely incredible. Guys, you know that I am in love with skinks and as a matter of fact, I hear that we have a couple more litters of skinks back home that they filmed. So when I get back, we'll definitely update you on this, guys. And I am freaking out because I want to see them. But this particular one is a Peter's Banded skink. I think they are absolutely incredible. I mean, look at how cute these guys are. This is a species that I've really wanted to work with. So hopefully with any luck at some point, I'll find some of these guys. You don't see that many of these guys captive so I hope I can find them. Look at them. I mean, they're absolutely incredible. And then of course there's fire skinks. Now fire skinks are kind of an interesting animal to me because they're not like super expensive and doesn't seem like they're super sought after in the States, but the truth is they're absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at these guys and they come in pretty readily wild caught, unfortunately, but there are some captive bred animals and they are unbelievable. I mean, just look at the color on these guys. I mean, if these guys were the size of blue tongue skinks, they would be unbelievably popular. But with that said, I still would like to work with them sometimes because I think they're super cool. I'm here at s and Exotics and they have, look at this, they have these cute little sand boas. Of course, these guys here are the little snow sand boas, which are double recessive. They're aneurythritic and albino. And this one here, of course, is an albino. So that is so cute. I mean, look at how absolutely adorable they are. Go look at this little monkey here. Oh my gosh. Come on, little sweetheart. Oh, look at you. Oh my gosh, guys. How amazing is that, huh? They are so incredibly cool. Oh. She literally rubs his belly. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love this thing. It's so beautiful. So these guys have amazing things here. I can't, you know, again, each table I go to is so awesome, but this is the first spider that I handled while I was here. I'm not gonna lie, today I thought it was gonna be a little slower as far as just the busyness, and it was just as busy as yesterday. So I did get around and see basically the entire place, which was really awesome. I tried to highlight as much as I possibly could, but uh, definitely things are coming to an end here. Everyone is packing up. This has been an absolutely amazing time here. I mean, it's inspiring to see a market like this kind of exploding, and just, I love the fact that the camaraderie between the breeders here is much more tight than in the States. I mean, everyone seems to get along and, and really respect each other, and I really, really enjoyed that part of the market. We have so much more adventure ahead. It's going to be amazing. The show is done, but we are far from done. We're actually going to head to Durban tonight with some of my friends and go have a great time down there and spend maybe three or four days, and then I'm not even sure what's going to happen, but I know it's going to be absolutely epic. So uh, let's go ahead and pack up out of the show and hit the road. All right, so this is the deal. We plan nothing on this trip other than the reptile show, and as of last Last night we went out to dinner and uh, guess what, Forrest, what did we decide to do? Well, we decided to go to Durban, so <laughs> <laughs> on, on, on a whim we're going to meet with Zulu people, look yeah. for crocodiles in the wild, see hippos, be in the ocean, look for sharks. Just whatever crazy stuff we can come up yeah, with. Yeah, and this was all on like the spear of the moment. So we are literally packing up right now. As a matter of fact, Forrest went and got a rental car, which he almost got lost and didn't get back, but that's in a whole nother story. We are going on a, what, five and a half, six hour drive right yeah. now. Uh, next stop, Durban. Well, the journey hasn't even begun, and guess what? Forrest lost our car. Good job, Forrest, where's our car? 
Hey, just wait till Africa gets to see my texting and driving. Uh, oh yeah, Forrest is notorious for texting and driving. Not just texting and driving, but like Facebooking, Instagramming. So uh, it's not surprising he lost our car. Let's hope we find it. Good news is we found our car and we are on the road to Durban. Bad news is is that we have like a five hour drive ahead of us, but it's gonna be an awe. Forrest almost just killed us. Oh my gosh, Is that not supposed to go? <laughs> Forrest just a taste of things to come. <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be a this is the most this is the most dangerous part of this trip by far is Forrest driving. Uh, wish me luck guys, wish me luck. Hey guys, I'm taking you on your first adventure into a South African store and uh it's always interesting. I love coming to places like this because uh, you get to see all kinds of weird candies and all kinds of other stuff. But uh, we're just going to get some little bit of food on the way. We still have about three and a half hours to Durban. Uh, but uh, let's see what they have to offer here. Let's I remember these. I remember these Simbas. How cool is that, huh? Simbas? Ah, I love it. This is like life changing. Now this isn't really good stuff anyways, but this is called biltong. Biltong is like a beef jerky type of thing. Uh, again, in the gas station, you're not gonna get real good biltong, but we're gonna definitely get biltong along the way because it is amazing. If you ever come to South Africa and you like beef jerky, please get biltong because it is incredible. Of course, there's this soda. I don't drink a lot of soda, but stony is really good. I always like this stuff that's really cool. Again, a weird soft drink, so. Okay, so this concludes your tour of the uh, convenience store in South Africa. We're going to catch a bite to eat at this restaurant and then get back on the road. Okay, back on the road. We're going to be in Durban in about two and a half hours. Okay, so we made it to Durban. We're in this really cool kind of Airbnb bed and breakfast thing. It's absolutely awesome. So this is where we're going to stay for the next couple days. We're going to do some amazing adventures tomorrow. I'm not even 100% sure what we're going to do, but I know it's going to be absolutely awesome. And so I hope that you guys will enjoy joining me on whatever we happen to do because you guys are going to learn about it as I do. I literally have no clue, but I don't care because that is the best adventures to have is when you don't know what you're going to do. I know it's going to be absolutely Epic. Regardless, I'm going to shut it down because it's pretty darn late and I need to get some sleep. I hope that you guys have an amazing day. Thank you guys as always for joining me. You guys are awesome. I love you guys so much. Do me a favor and be kind to someone today. And I promise I'm going to see you guys tomorrow.